All right, I want to talk about another aspect of this case, and that would be this right here. This is the document that uh, outlines the conversation word for word that Judge Gull had with the attorneys for Richard Allen. I had a chance to literally read it line by line on the air earlier today. It was kind of boring. Uh, for Bradley Rossi and Andrew Baldwin, of course, the uh, two attorneys who are uh, quoted in here along with uh, the judge. Uh, I'm curious, uh, this has been out now for a little while. Uh, your thoughts, now that we know exactly what happened in Chambers uh, with his attorneys, them being dismissed, uh, and just kind of the overall direction of that conversation. Was it appropriate? Was Judge Gull on the right here to uh, take these attorneys off of this case uh, despite the arguments that were made? Now, I got to disagree with Judge Gull here. First, trying to keep these proceedings a secret. Listen, I understand why you have in-camera proceedings if there's something attorney-client privilege. You don't want it to be disclosed in open court. Look, sometimes lawyers have a breakdown with their client or there's something they need to reveal to the judge and not to the public. But, you know, when the court of appeal asks for it, you better turn it over. That's a higher judge, number mm -hmm. one. The second kind of issue I have with her is the issue in the case isn't the gross negligence. I mean, she didn't need to come out on record and say that Alan's attorneys committed gross negligence because one, she doesn't know. She hasn't conducted an evidentiary hearing, talked to the folks who actually leaked the material, right? Mm -hmm. She's just basing it on, you know, the reports that the material is out. Could it be someone that had access that shouldn't or some staff member? But really the issue in the case is now there's a potential conflict, right? Alan might be able to sue his lawyers claim that they were ineffective. So it's that conflict that merits disqualification. You know, you're not the finder of fact here to say that, hey, you two lawyers, you guys are grossly negligent. So I think that was inappropriate and something I think that she it wasn't necessary for her to get to where she needed to go, which is to get the lawyers off the case and something I disagree with. So if you were Richard Allen now, where, what would you do? What would you see to be the best path? Because he seems to truly believe that uh, these two are are the best for him and they seem to think the same and they're willing to work pro bono on this for the principle of it. Um, yes, he does have a potential case against them, but do you want to just keep going forward with who you believe is there to represent you uh, and do it to the best of their ability? Or do you go forward with the uh, other assigned uh, attorneys that have uh, been put in place in this case? Yeah. So if I'm Richard Allen and I really want these two lawyers, this is what I say. I mean, the pro bono doesn't really change the analysis, whether they're being paid or not. But what I say is this, Your Honor, this isn't an actual conflict. This is a potential conflict. And I am willing to make a knowing and voluntary waiver of that conflict in open court. You can ask me, I'm going to waive my malpractice claim. I'm going to waive any ineffective assistance of counsel claim. You're going to advise me of my rights, the right to file a lawsuit, the right to um, challenge my attorney's representation on appeal. I understand I have those rights. And I'm willing to waive those rights. In fact, I also have a right, a Sixth Amendment right, to choose the attorney of my choice. This is, you know, uh, I think we're talking about a potential death penalty case, obviously. Um, Indiana has a death penalty. So I want to choose my own lawyer. And I'm going to waive all these conflicts. So I think if you do that, you, you put the judge in a position where any conflict issue is resolved. Mm -hmm. And that way you'll be able to choose the attorney of your choice. In the interest of Richard Allen uh, and fairness here and, and not any optics of someone either not doing their job or being negligent or this or that, uh, should Judge Gull recuse herself on this? Should that part of this whole equation be reset uh, at this point now that we've already gone down this kind of dark, bizarro world? Yeah, I don't think so. I think judges make mistakes all the time. Uh, judges aren't gods, so... That's what appellate courts are for. They get reversed. It comes back down. So, you know, if ultimately a higher judge makes the right decision, I don't think a judge necessarily needs to get off a case just because they made a wrong ruling or they're reversed on appeal. Hey, it's Tony Bruschi. If you want more of our interview with our guest, be sure to check out our podcast, Hitting Killers with Tony Bruschi. Just search that wherever you download podcasts and press subscribe. Also, you can check out our YouTube channel for the full video version of the interviews as well. Under the same name, Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi. Check it out, subscribe, binge, and enjoy. Thanks for watching.